You don't have to. Just close the door. That'd be great. Thank you so much, Laura. Welcome to Playful Orange, our conversations on Thursdays. Um, my guest is Peter Schreier and Laura, who just left the room, we just heard. Welcome, Peter. Thank you, Terry. Glad to be here. Peter, you have been a leader in our arts community for many years. How many years have you been at the Creality School of Art? I had recently my 25th anniversary as the CEO, executive director, but I've actually been in involved in an artistic position, heading the photography department since the 1980s. And how did you come to be here at Creality? Well, I was uh, born in Switzerland. I grew up there. I went to college there. And during my uh, college uh, summer in 1975, I uh, uh, satisfied this great hunger that I had had for some time to travel the United States. I traveled with Greyhound coast to coast and just fell in love with the country, with its size, its diversity of people and landscape. And I went back to Switzerland with this dream to return to the U.S. and I did a few years later and uh, really came to, to Florida at a time where, you know, as somebody once said, you could sort of write your own story. You know, in the, in the 80s, I was here when uh, the arts community was was really developing and growing and and there were a lot of opportunities to kind of write your own your own story and early in in those years i got involved at creole and i was just a teacher here for a number for a number of years why so i traveled a lot with my photography i was doing commercial work i was developing my fine arts career and and really developing uh, a reputation and experience as a documentary photographer. And I didn't realize it in the beginning that so much of what I would see and photograph would sort of become the story of the growth in Central Florida and all the changes around me. And I have, I have a 40 year plus uh, black and white archive of documentary photography of people and places and, and their stories from many communities around Central Florida, which have changed dramatically since. Yes. Well, is the Creality School of Art, is it similar to something back in Switzerland that you're familiar with, or is this um, a new thing for you? Absolutely not. I have never actually, uh, I have found places in the U.S. that are similar, but never quite found a place like it. And I certainly have not in Switzerland. And, you know, I have a lot of family there. I go back a lot. I know that's where your ancestry is, too. And I've had exhibits of my work there. I've done a couple documentaries there as well. And whenever people ask me about Creole Day and I tell them about it, they're like amazed. They said, oh, wow, we wish we had a place like that. I think the concept of community arts are outside of a formal academic or gallery uh, in, environment is, is, is now happening in Europe. But 20, 30 years ago, it really did not. It really did not exist very well. It was already quite uh, developed here. So it's, uh, I've had times I've dr dreamed about going back over there and, and starting something like this here, but uh, I'm, I'm too settled here with family and, and everything. And what would you say is Creality's unique niche in the Central Florida arts and cultural scene? We're the real deal. We're there for everyone. You know, I mean, people tell me this all the time that come in from the outside. There is a voice for everyone here artistically in our galleries, everything from from the students and the children and the outreach partners get to exhibit their work all the way to, uh, you know, professional, internationally renowned known artists. Uh, there is a there's a place for everyone. You don't have to have money to come here. You can come on a scholarship. If you don't have transportation to come to Winter Park, you can uh, be in one of our community programs in, in places like South Apopka and Winter Garden and, and so forth. And uh, I just never quite find another place that lives its mission uh, that strongly that the arts are really for everyone and that we look for a way to get people involved and have them contribute and enrich community life through the arts. 
and how many how many people come through your facility in a year you know well we work in we have three major campuses that we teach two in winter park the main campus the hannibal square center and then we also teach in 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 winter in winter garden we participate in festivals and everything so there's sort of two numbers that i can give you one is the big number which is around sixty thousand a year which include all those festivals and traveling shows and and all these kind of things and there is a another smaller but impressive number and that's the actual students who are signing up for a class that runs six to eight weeks on one of our campuses and that number is about 3500 i'm really blessed with the interests from the community in the post-pandemic is that we are we are running about 20 percent higher than in 2019 which was at that time historically our best year and that on top of it we are running about a 20 percent wait list for our program so we are really are unable to meet the demand of the community so you know people tell me it's a nice problem to have but you also don't want to disappoint people so we've accelerated uh, a plan to build two new studios next year on our campus and, in Maryland. and you have numerous uh genres of arts that are taught there yes uh we are we are pretty much uh concentrating we never wanted to really dilute and go into other directions so it's all visual art and the four major areas of study are painting and drawing photography ceramics and sculpture and then there's some smaller areas like printmaking and jewelry that are, that, are part, that are part of those programs. We have right now 53 visual artists that are not payroll teaching. You say you like to travel and have done a bunch. Is there something that you have seen somewhere else that has been a great inspiration to you? Absolutely, I always get inspired uh, you know, when, I, when, I, when I travel. Uh, my recent experience has been in one of my favorite places anywhere. It's in northern New Mexico. I worked on a, a documentary with a class of advanced students from Corral Day as a tribute to the 200th anniversary of the Santa Fe Trail. And to work in communities in northern New Mexico that are so steep in history, but who are struggling with economic uh, survival, COVID or no COVID, it's always been difficult, and who are not sure how to embrace culture tourism because they have a lot of historical places they have beautiful mountains and scenery but some of the communities are really struggling with if we let the tourists come in and we let the tourists come and uh, through our towns and is that going to change our life are they are the tourists and the visitors going to destroy our our heritage and our history and so it, it's an interesting dialogue that, that i've been part of that i've seen out in some of those communities and you know i can always say we have all the experience in Florida. We've made all the mistakes, but we've also had a lot of successes. So I wish that you could just take our successes and and not make the mistakes with bulldozing and gentrification and and disregard for uh, for people's heritage, especially if it's areas that involve poverty and underrepresentation. And in your work locally, you have uncovered some of the authentic or the uh, original. Um, Central Florida, outside of the theme parks that have brought everything else, right? Absolutely. The, the, the work out of my career that I'm the proudest of and that I can share with so many people that have helped create this is really what we do in the Hannibal Square community in Winter Park, uh, being part of the founding and the creation of the Hannibal Square Heritage Center in 2007, which is a tribute to the historic African-American community in Winter Park. If any of our listeners have not been there, go, you know, go check it out. Go talk to one of our historians there from the community. Talk to Barbara Chandler, who is the, the manager of the center, and, and learn about history through the words and the photographs told by the people who actually lived that history rather than an outsider. And learn about the history through the public art the sculptures, the paintings, the murals that have been created around uh, the center 
in that Westfield Park community. Well, Peter, you've been uh, involved in a lot, and I uh, thank you for our conversation today. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for our listeners. Uh, each Thursday, we publish a Playfully Orange about arts and culture in Central Florida. I also, on Tuesdays, do Diverse Orange about diversity here in Central Florida. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much. Appreciate, appreciate everything you do for the community. Thank you.